So hi everyone and welcome to this video on applications of matrix algebra to economics. And in this particular video, we're going to discuss a closed economy ISLM model. So this is a very typical uh, sort of example concerning uh, macroeconomics. So we have IS, which is the goods market, and we have VLM, which is the money market. And this simple Keynesian model was developed such that um, we could see the association between these two markets and we can calculate for the, the overall national income, which is Y, and the level of interest rate R. So um, if you recall the ISLM model, so you have Y on um, the Y axis, and then you have here your interest rate, which is R, then the IS curve is the downward sloping curve. Then you have an LM curve, which is upward sloping. Then the uh, what is of concern is, of course, what this Y star would end up being and what this R star, which is the natural, uh, the optimal level of national income, as well as, the, I'm sorry, the equilibrium level of national income and the equilibrium interest rate. So we know that, of course, it's composed of the IS part and the LM part. So we'll decompose it too. So consider a model of an economy consisting of goods, a goods market, and a money market. So as we said, in the IS part, which is the goods market, consumption C is some linear function of national income. So C is equal to C naught. C naught is some autonomous consumption. Uh, uh, and this is plus B times one minus T Y, right? So you have B, which is your marginal propensity to consume. And then uh, out of your disposable income, one minus T Y. Uh, essentially, um, your disposable income is uh, Y minus T, which is your income after taxes. So of course, when you earn an income, part of that income is taxed by the government and it's taken as government revenue. So whatever's left after subtracting the taxes times your marginal propensity to consume will be that particular value. So that's the first part, which is the consumption equation. Then you also have the investment equation, which is a linear function of the interest rate. So you have I naught, which is again, autonomous uh, investment minus uh, C times R, uh, wherein C lies between zero and one. Note that we have a negative here because there's a negative association between the interest rate and the level of investment in the economy. And as before, in a typical, in a typical IS equation or a Keynesian model, your Y, which is national income, under a closed economy, there's no international trade, no exports and imports, is just equal to the sum of C plus I plus G naught, wherein G naught is government expenditure and it is assumed to be exogenously determined in the model. So in this particular model, at least in the IS part, you have Y, C, I, and R, which are endogenous variables. G naught, as we said, we assume to be exogenous and you have a couple of parameters that are there. Then in the money market part, uh, the demand for money is given as MD, which is money demand. And uh, you that is equal to K times Y minus L times R. So uh, note that these two quantities are greater than zero, right? So you have K and then you have L. So you assume that the quantity, uh, so that's your money demand equation. Then you have your money supply equation, uh, which is the quantity of money supplied MS, and that's determined by the central bank and is therefore exogenous, right? So most central banks determine the level of money supply in a basic model. So the equilibrium condition for the money market is of course that the money demand should equal the money supply. Therefore, in the form above, M naught is exogenous and K and L are parameters. So we have here essentially your money demand which is equal to M naught and note that M naught is equal to your money supply and your money demand. So uh, if, if you try and solve, since you have Y here, you can sort of, so for, you have KY minus LR equal to M naught. You can transpose the uh, LR. So you get KY is equal to M naught minus LR, divide everything by K, Right, divide everything by K and you get Y is equal to M naught over K minus LR over K. That's this equation here. This represents your LM equation. 
And the first equation uh, just represents your IS equation. And you get that if you try and do this. So you do Y is equal to C naught plus B times one minus T Y uh, plus investment, which is I naught minus C R plus G naught. So what you can do is you can ask uh, uh, all the terms with uh, a y a y there you can put to one side so this is y minus b times one minus t uh, y equal to c naught plus uh, i naught minus c r plus g naught then you can factor out the y you get one minus b times one minus t equal to C naught plus I naught minus C R plus G naught. Then you divide both sides by this uh, form here, which is one minus B uh, times one minus T. And you get Y being equal to C naught plus I naught minus C R plus G naught all over one minus B times one minus T. And that's the equation that we have here. And that is your IS equation. So. Uh, when we equate the IS equation, which shows the equilibrium in the goods market with the LM equation. So if I equate these, note that they're both equal to Y. If we equate the two, we can solve for the equilibrium level of interest rate and GDP in the economy. So these are those things. So let's start with an example uh, using matrix algebra. So we're given here with an IS equation and an LM equation, and we're told to first uh, write the ISLM system in matrix form and to solve for the level of interest rate and national income in the economy using matrix inversion and Kramer's rule. So for this video, let's use Kramer's rule because it's more straightforward. So let's start first with the first one, which is to write out, write out ISLM LM in, uh, equa in matrix form, in matrix form. So if you recall, right, your IS equation is this one. So this is your IS equation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both of these sides by 1 minus B, right? Because there's this pesky denominator that, that, I know, that I don't want. So I'll multiply both sides by 1 minus B to take out the denominators in the other side. So I'm going to be left with 1 minus B times Y equal to A minus G R. Right, I'm gonna be left with that. Then uh, what's gonna happen is uh, this is my LM equation, right? So it's uh, similar, it has a pesky denominator. So let me multiply both sides of the equation by K, right? So I'm gonna get KY equal to M naught plus LR. So that's, uh, so this becomes my IS equation, right? Equation, this is my LM equation. Now, my choice variables, so remember, uh, your endogenous variables, what you're solving for endogenous, are uh, Y and R. So you want to isolate these two things on one side of the equation. So uh, uh, note we have an R here. We also have an R here. So we're going to transpose them to the other side of the equation. So this becomes 1 minus B times Y plus GR. Uh, and then this one uh, is uh, equal to just A. Then we have here KY uh, minus LR that's equal to M naught. Okay, so that's what we have there. Now, since both of them are now with uh, one side of it is endogenous, one side is exogenous, we can now put it in matrix form. So uh, placing it, uh, placing in matrix form, right? So uh, remember, we have our uh, matrices here, right? So this is our constant uh, column. Whoops, let me just uh, fix the drawing. This is our constant column, and then we have one here. Our choice variables are Y and R. So let me write it like that. And if I want to represent this system of equation into matrix form, remember, it's just going to be the first equation. That's 1 minus B times Y. So 1 minus B goes here. Then G is the coefficient of R, so G goes here, right? For the second equation, uh, the coefficient of Y is K, so K goes here. And then the coefficient of R is negative L, so negative L goes here. 
then both of these are equal. This one is A, this one is M0. So this is my constant vector, this is my A matrix, and this is my choice variable, which is X. So uh, let's use Kramer's rule. So using Kramer's rule, okay, Kramer's rule. So first step is we need to get the determinant of your A matrix. So the determinant of a two by two is just A, D minus B, C. So a, uh, just to recall, A, D, so you multiply this one and this one. So it's gonna be negative L times one minus B, right? Uh, uh, minus BC, it's minus G times K. And that's the determinant of A. And you can solve for it. Uh, remember, so we have here some values that we have. So you have L, negative L, so that's negative 200 times one minus B1 minus B, that's 0 0.7 based on the guide, minus G, G is equal to 100, right, times K. K is equal to 0.25, right? And if you solve this, this should be equal to negative 85, right? That should be equal to negative 85, okay? Moving on, we need to get now the determinant of uh, A1. And what we're going to do, because this is Kramer's rule, we're, we're going to uh, plug in or substitute our D matrix to the first column, because that's matrix A1. So we're going to get the determinant of A, M0, G, negative L. Right? So we're going to get the, the, the determinant of that matrix. And the determinant of that matrix is just equal to, uh, it's just going to be negative L, A, that's A, D, minus B, C, that's negative G, M0. And we need to get also the determinant of A2, which is going to be equal to, uh, instead of plugging it to the first column, the D matrix into the first column, we're going to plug it into the second column. So it's going to be 1 minus B times K. Then this one will be A, M0. Then this one will just simply be uh, 1 minus B times M0 minus A times K. So that's what we have there. And uh, if, if we just solve for, if we just substitute what this is, so A1 is just negative 200, A is 252, right? Minus G, G is equal to uh, 100. Then you have M0, which is 176, right? 176. Then you'll know that this one is equal to, um, this one will be negative 68,000. Right, so that's A1. Then you have A2. A2 is just going to be equal to um, 0 0.3. That's 1 minus B. Your M0 is 176, right? 176 minus A. A is equal to, uh, A is equal to 252, right? And then your K is 0.25. This one, if you solve it, it should be equal to... Uh, negative 10.2. Then to solve for y, your y star, that's just going to be equal to determinant of a1 over the determinant of a because uh, y goes first, so that's associated with a1. And if you do that, this will be equal to your determinant of a1 that's equal to negative 68,000 divided by your determinant of a that's negative 85 negative 68,000 divided by negative 85, you're going to be left with 800. And that's going to be your Y. Your R is going to be your determinant A2 over the determinant of A. This one will be equal to negative 10.2 divided by negative 85. And if you solve for that, you get 0.12. Therefore, y star is equal to 800 that's your equilibrium national level of income and your r star is equal to 0.12 and that is the equilibrium national level of the interest rate so that's a simple example using a closed economy islm model and showing how matrix algebra can be applied in this particular scenario so thank you for your attention and i'll see you in the next video thank you very much